Hello, Ghanaians. Welcome aboard the news review segment on the AM show. Of course, we are watching. It's the Ben and Sweetie show, and we are, we are, you know, airborne, ready to take off. So let's introduce our guests this morning. Before we do, you made a prediction yesterday. So now oh. I'm going to say you are not a prophetess. You said that we would end up donning the same color today. I wanted and to wear blue, and I had a, a sabu. function. I you had a what? A wardrobe oh, malfunction. Yes. So you're trying to say. <laughs> so you would have been in navy blue this morning. No, deep blue actually. I had a really. Okay, this is well. This is. Yeah. Mm. Truth, truthfully. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was about to take you on there. But uh, don't worry. Tomorrow we'll match colors. Hey, so you're matching blue all the way down. I haven't looked at you properly today. Uh, is that Adidas or Abibas? <laughs> I never do Abibas. With your blue jeans and blue tie, blue coat, blue everything. Even a blue watch. Oh, oh, don't, for, don't, don't forget that the tie is striped and my, my, shoe, my, my sneakers also have Thank stripes. You. I wish you could give the, the audience a 360. <laughs> but let's bring in Dr. Kwame Asasante. <laughs> this morning. Doc, good morning. You're, and thank you're, you're so going to much give Doc ammunition to use against his former students. <laughs> on the AM show, Benjamin, it's okay. Let's get, in, let's get to serious business. Doc, welcome aboard the AM show. Thank you. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. Benjamin thought you'd um, comment on his not Abiba satire this morning. But <laughs> uh, I did not hear that. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you, Doc. Thank you so much. In fact, gentlemen, how did you feel yesterday afternoon after that game? Why, why slowly, do you have to just I want rub to bring it in. it in because I, you know, I don't actually do, make an intentional decision to watch the games these days. But I was on my way home, so I listened to the commentary, and the whole time I'm wondering who is actually watching this game right now. And we are, slowly, we are slowly going to not qualify for the AFCON um, game. So and it would be the first time in over 30 years. The last time I checked, Angola was leading us by seven points. Mm. They are leading. Look, look at the gap. That is two games plus a draw, right? And after the match, Otoado, you know, I, one of the things he said was, oh, they scraped through because of luck. And I was like, hey, Otoado. That's where we've reached now. Uh, now they take us to Sudan and they put us on their laps and give us a spanking. And, Two uh, goals to nil. Doc, how did you feel about the game yesterday? I don't know, man. Yeah, that is going to be my comment today. Uh -huh. Let's yeah. get into it then. <laughs> yes. Because, you see, my worry is that um, we have records uh, and we have records to protect. Uh, you recall when Blaster were making a lot of uh, laurels, uh, you know, making us proud. We had very, no, let me put it this way, not that sophisticated players and all that, but they managed and played and played well and gave us all that we needed in terms of glory. Today, in spite of all the experiences our players have by the fact that they're exposed to, you know, European soccer and the rest of them, where, what has happened to Black Stars? Mm. Is it the case that we are not able to plan properly, or we don't have the right people to manage the affairs of Blaster, or we simply we don't have uh, the materials worth using for the match. I would say no, no, no to all this, simply because we have all the quality of players here, all right? We have the best coaches if we want to have. They are all over the world. They are in Ghana. They are all over. But we have failed to recognize one thing. As Nkoma put it, organization decides everything. We have not organized ourselves well. We need to put our act together and begin to what? build a solid football team right from home. Mm. And then you develop it to the national level. Then it goes continental level. For me, that is the way to go. Because right. if you look at players like Samuel Eto and all that, they discovered them mm -hmm. from the academies, from local you know, uh, football clubs. And develop them. Growing up, I saw Abedi Peli, you know, playing the coast and then all the local leagues to Dragons of Benin and then uh, to Marseille and mm -hmm. the rest of them. Why can't you do same and tap talents, you know? Uh, I saw in the 70s where they were playing, you know, zonal leagues, uh, regional leagues, national and all that. They were looking for what talent to pick and train and develop. Even in university, we have academic house. People yeah. who were still in school and they were you know, very good in playing. What has happened? 
my country should get the basis right. right. The talents are here. All that we need to organize and organize ourselves well. Remember, we put in a lot of resources to build Black Star. So we don't have to what, disappoint taxpayers. Okay. So from sports, thank you so much for that, Doc. Let's get into business of the day, the newspapers. I'll start with the Custodian newspaper. On the front page, Fitch also upgrades Ghana's economy. Apenio Markin drags back bin to Supreme Courts over four MPs. Baumia is best to succeed me, President Tukufuadu declares. Central region showcases massive government projects and Utah group gives leadership or leaders October 18th to call off strike. Let's start from page three on this story of Apenio Markin dragging the office of the speaker. Yesterday I listened to the speaker. He said not he himself as, you know, Alban Bagbin, but the office to court over those four MPs who stand a chance or who might be losing their seats. The story reads, the majority leader and member of parliament with Futu constituency, Mr. Alexander Apenio Markin, has filed an injunction application at the Supreme Court to challenge a petition by Tamale South MP Harun Idrisu regarding the status of four members of parliament. Now, former majority leader Harun Idrisu has petitioned the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Kisford Bagbin, to declare the parliamentary seats of Suhum, Amenfi Central, and Aguna West MPs vacant following their decision to contest the 2024 general election as independent candidates in their <coughs> respective constituencies. And uh, according to the application that he <coughs> filed, he says, per the true interpretation of these, um, ma these, um, the con these articles in the 1992 Constitution, the filing of nomination of these members of parliament does not warrant declaring their seats vacant. Let me hold on to this and add one more story to it and come to you, Doc. I want to do the story about Fitch also upgrading Ghana's economy. And that story is also on page three. Another global credit ratings agency, Fitch, has upgraded Ghana's economy following that from Moody's in less than a week, placing the country in a positive position that will stimulate economic growth. Fitch upgraded the country's long-term local currency issuer default ratings from CCC to CCC+. Plus. And it also assigned Ghana's new U.S. dollar bonds issued on October 9, 2024, a CCC plus rating. Now, regarding outlook, Fitch noted that it typically did not assign outlooks to IDRs of sovereigns with a rating of CCC plus or below. And for context, last Friday, Moody's upgraded Ghana's long-term local and foreign currency issuer ratings to CAA2 from CAA3 and CA respectively. These two stories, Dr. Kwame Asante, for your reflections. I think I will look at the first is the, the fish story and the economy. Yeah. It's heartwarming to hear that uh, we are turning the corner. If that is the case, uh, then I expect that managers of our economy will not go back to the old order that <laughs> they meant manage the affairs of the state to the extent that we have to go back to the IMF and then look for uh, some, uh, you know, uh, support, mm. right? Once we are physically disciplined and we are able to work within our means and work within our budget, I expect that all things being equal, we should be able to withstand whatever shocks that uh, confront us. Yes, but once uh, you can have all resources, you can have all the, 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 the good signs about the health of your economy, but if you decide uh, to undermine it, you can do that. And more often than not, the economists will tell you that Anytime we are going for election, we are likely to destroy the very economy that we've built simply because we want to win power. And when we win power, we are not able to because there's no resources to drive the programs that we have in our manifesto. I mm. want my country uh, to take this note and then take it seriously and then guard against us. The issue about uh, the speaker being uh, the office of the speaker dragged yeah. to Supreme Court and the rest of them. I think it's an appropriate forum. Let's wait for the court to do justice to the matter. We'll come and then see what the courts have done, and then we can take it from there. Okay. Let's leave it to the courts, he says. Benjamin. Well, I will start with some sporting uh, news. Manu and Ferguson role. He's been an ambassador since 2013. But since Sir Jim Ratcliffe took over, there have been cost-cutting measures to save some what? Uh, 45 million pounds and um, 
He is one of about, is it 250 members of staff who have been axed, and that is the situation. Of course, there is that story there about Sudan stunning the stars in Libya. Some people feel Libya and um, Sudan are not footballing nations. They just have to go back in time and realize that even when Ghana was winning trophies, Libya was in there, Sudan as uh, well. So there are no minnows, there are no walkovers, and they are showing us exactly that. Atletico faces a stadium ban, um, and that is after more pitch invasions for about two weeks. That's the proposal. And Tuco is New England boss, former Chelsea boss Thomas Tuco has agreed to become the next England manager. I just wanted to start with sports. But now, let's get into the Daily Guide newspaper. Independent MPs case. Afenyo Markin seeks injunction. We've already got into that. I'll not delve into it. IPAC exposes NDC again. Government showcases central region projects. PIAC holds workshop on oil production. Fatal East Legon crash. This is something I want to look at. Police arrest Bishop and wife. And First Lady unveils renovated council uh, building. Let me start from page three. So the story says, the Electoral Commission has cautioned political parties as well as independent presidential candidates to exercise restraint in their remarks on issues uh, bordering on the provisional voters registration and related matters in an attempt to discredit uh, the commission. Editor of Daily Guide, a common mistake that shouldn't come in your newspaper bordering not bothering it's not bothering any, anybody bordering on everybody says this about when you see it in a newspaper it becomes egregious because then you are teaching more people the wrong thing anyway the it consultant to the ec dr furia j made the call following some allegations made by the deputy director of elections and it for the ndc dr rashid tanko computer that the revised provisional voters register re-exhibited online by the ec still contained discrepancies which produced double identities for individuals who verified their details online. Uh, the NDC representative, who was still not convinced with the explanations provided by the EC, offered their na three names to substantiate the alleged double identity. But let me just skip. Um, but the EC, after a quick check on their IT system, disclosed that the claims by the NDC that those names were registered voters with multiple identities were false. According to the IT consultant, those names were individuals whose ID cards were replaced with new ones uh, when the commission detected the anomaly in the 2020 election. Okay. I don't know how um, the Daily Guide posits that because someone has said this, so that is the fact, without, I don't know, its own verification system. All I do know is that we want peace in Ghana and we want the right things to be done so that whoever is selected come December, um, no, yeah, December 7. Now, I get a bit confused because of the American election. December 7 is reflective of the will of the people. But Doc, I got to check yesterday. You know now you can check online. So the first time I hadn't been able to check yesterday, I used the code, checked, got my details on my phone. And indeed, it is the same place I voted. And I will be going back there uh, to vote come December the 7th. Then there is also fatal East Legon crash, police arrest, bishop and wife. The Ghana Police Service has arrested Bishop Elisha Salifu Amwako and his wife, Muha Amwako, over their son's fatal accident, which resulted in the death of two 12-year-old girls at East Legon on October 12, 2024, and had several others injured. We already know the story. I feel this is a step in the right direction. I'm also going to ask, what happened to the Lil Wynn issue? Lil Wynn, what happened? I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble, but... What's happened to that issue? Little boy died. I, I, I don't know whether he was about three, four years. Died. I could be wrong, but about his age. But he died. What has happened to that issue? And here, the linkage I want to draw is the fact that, if you recall that latest killing, a mass shooting in the U.S., where a kid who had showed, a child who had showed some tendencies online was allowed to have a gun by his father, and now his father has been called upon. He is being tried for uh, maybe some recklessness in allowing his son to have a weapon. I believe it's a, something similar that is happening here. I, I don't know what your thoughts are on these developments, uh, Doc. Over to you. Yes. I will start by <clears throat> looking at the iPad story. Mm. Right? Yes. As you rightly pointed out, 
we don't want anything uh, short of an environment, electoral environment, that will, you know, create uh, that opportunity for people to contest and contest well. And uh, we want the whole electoral plane uh, to be equal so that at the end of the day, when people lose, they will accept defeat and right. abide by the rules of the game. So that makes it possible uh, for electoral commission and all the political actors to work in such a way that uh, we'll be able to have uh, this uh, opportunity one more time. Ghana has struggled to build a democracy to this level. And this is not a time uh, to do anything to undermine the fortunes of what we have toiled for over the years. There are very negative examples relative to democracy in the sub-region. And I don't want my country to be part of this. So what it means is that it's not prayer. It is not uh, any other thing <laughs> but work, work, action. That we see a problem, we deal with a problem head on. And then later, after we've done everything, we can go and pray. I'm not saying prayer is not good. But see, we as humans, we have a duty. Duty is that we need to apply our faculty to address problems. And that is why all of us have heads. So I want us to what, see the problems that confront us, that is something that is doable and that we can do it and we do it and that's it. I will touch on the Sudan, Libya, uh, you know, uh, teams and then what they have performed over the years. People think that these are <laughs> minos, as you rightly said. They are not. Uh, if you follow football for a very long time, you realize that these are giants in football. You recall many years where blasters go there, they suffer in Sudan and all that. But even talk about Libya, 1984, if my yeah. memory serves me well, right, yeah. we're playing African Cup of Nations. And that was going to what? Help us to prepare for the world encounter and all that. I remember at Tremson, uh, we were beaten heavily uh, there uh, by, uh, you know, Libyans and all that. They are great football nation. If you look at the Madrid, the Maghreb, the, the players, the teams there, they are very strong teams. So you need to up your game in order to stand them. This time around, even if the people do, know how, do not know how to play, there are examples they have invested. And now <coughs> you see them performing. For a very uh, long time, Okina was not doing well. But you've seen in recent time, their exploits, amazing. It tells you that uh, once you get your basis right, you can do stuff. Hmm. Well, interesting thoughts there. You know, there was this, uh, if memory serves, there was a final of the African Cup of Nations, as we you know, called it then. I think we faced Libya, in Libya. Yes. And then, uh, yeah, there was at least one I remember. And what you said about not just praying, it reminds me of James in, in the Bible. It says, faith and works, right? Through my faith or through my works, I'll show you my faith. So we can pray all right, but the right things must be uh, set in motion. Mm -hmm. I think that's it for me for the yeah. Daily Guide newspaper. Right. So let me do the Ghanaian publisher now. I'll just do two stories here. But there are a lot of stories. There's the Apenyo Markin seeking Supreme um, Court injunction as independent MP's case here. Over 22,500 imports distributed to fishermen by NPP, says the fisheries minister. Silence ma majority to UTAG National Executive Council. Call of strike in three days or... ADB recovers over 500 million Ghana CDs, NPLs, in nine months. I'll do two stories on the silent, silent majority of UTAG and the fisheries. Hopefully one more story. So a group or a faction of the University Teachers Association of Ghana, known as the silent majority, has called on the National Executive Council to halt the ongoing strike against illegal mining. During a press briefing in Accra yesterday, Professor Isaac Boedi, the group's spokesperson, called on the NEC to form a team to monitor the implementation of the government's roadmap for addressing the Galamse issue. He urged the national leadership to take immediate action and end the strike by October 18, 2024. And Professor Boedi also requested that the NEC invite all presidential candidates as well as parliamentary candidates from mining constituencies to sign and publicly declare their commitment to tackling illegal mining in Ghana. In other words, UTAG should call off its strike because government is actually implementing some measures to curb the Galamse menace. You know what's interesting when, about that? And mm -hmm. I would like to find out from Doc since he's there. But if you look at the 
the response acknowledging receipt. The first point that is made, firstly, as reflected in the petition and press conference, we noted that your group included several individuals who are not UTAG members. And it goes on and on, but it's interesting that this comes up, but UTAG uh, maintaining its position on the matter. Maybe we can find out from Doc what later on when you're ready. No, let's, what, let's, what let's find out. Doc, what do you make of it? Um, I think uh, this call has been made. Uh, UTAG as a mother uh, organization will respond to it. Uh, so I'll leave that one for UTAG to deal with now because, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't hold position in UTAG and uh, there are leaders all over uh, the universities. They will come out with uh, appropriate response and then uh, we'll know uh, the direction to follow. That said, I will also look at the inputs for fish farmers. Uh, you know, I'm very interested in fish farming. Indeed. Because when we're talking about uh, food security, right now we are being told that we are likely to hit, uh, um, you know, a snack in, in this area if we don't uh, deal with things mm. appropriately. I am happy that you have a government that wants to support fish farming, particularly aquaculture. Brilliant. Good. Uh, because if you look at the risk involved in going to travel long distances to go and catch fish and the rest of them, and you can do that at your backyard, it's fine. And you government has moved a step forward to supply, you know, inputs. Uh, right. I know that they supply fingerlings and the rest, and mm. then in addition to that, they supply also feed. But there is a bigger question. <clears throat> Farmers are not able to sell at the end of harvest, there are very few marketing outlets, and I speak on authority, that I can, because I'm in the industry. Mm. Uh, you, your fish get ready and you have nobody to buy. Can you imagine? And uh, one day I talked to a gentleman in the ministry that why do you have such a brilliant policy and you are not able to carry it to its logical conclusion? You supply inputs, and at the end of the day, when uh, the harvest is ready, nobody is there to buy. You have only a few people who buy. That should not be a policy by a ministry. We should have, you know, a system that is put in place to address this. I look around and I see people selling in the streets. They have no job. Can the state look at the situation where we're saying, you know, let us have vans that will go around. You give it to these people. Go and buy so so and so. Uh, you will print in maybe Adenta, for instance, 10 people, get all the fish there uh, into a warehouse or, you know, a cold, uh, cold store, and then we add value or we export. We will get all the boys and the girls in the street off this thing. When I was a little boy growing up at the Procom, I saw State Fishing Corporation bringing the vans around, selling fish to our homes and all that. Uh, that example is not far uh, it's not out of our reach. We should be able to think outside the box and get this so that we don't spend a lot of state resources uh, getting fingerlings, getting feed for farmers. At the end of the day, when they are ready, the state is not ready to buy. I am saying this because there is an example that I have learned over the years that that is how uh, we started importing what a chicken into this country. This is how it started. The state was producing all the basic, you know, uh, factors of production. And then when the chicken were ready for sale, the web, government was not there to buy. So individual decided to import. And today, the story is too clear for me to recount it here. We need to shy away from this and get our policies to a logical conclusion. Thank you so much, Doc. Let me do this story so we all take caution. Nine cholera cases recorded in Greater Accra. And Ghana has recorded nine cholera cases in the Adan West and Adan East districts of the Greater Accra region. A statement issued by the Ghana Health Service in Accra yesterday said the first case was confirmed on October 4th, 2024 in the Adan West district. The statement indicated that infected individuals sought treatment at a health facility with symptoms of vomiting, diarrhea and abdominal pain a few days after attending a funeral in Adan East. It also noted that a cholera case was subsequently confirmed in the Ada East District. And in response, the Ghana Health Service has activated public health emergency management committees at all levels to address the situation. And um, they are advising the public to take caution because... Um, I want to skip to that. Cholera transmission is closely linked to inadequate access to clean water 
and sanitation facilities. Typically, at risk areas include periban slums as well as camps for internally displaced persons and early detection and treatment are crucial to preventing complications and reducing mortality. So please take note what you eat, what you drink, where you get them. Um, if possible, at all times, try to eat hot meals. It reduces the risk. Anyway, so that's the only story I'll do in addition for the Ghanaian publisher. And I'll come to the Ghanaian Times later after Benjamin does one more. I will I go back I, briefly. Uh, but no, go ahead if you yeah, have a response. Yeah, on the cholera issue, uh, yeah. Yeah, the cholera issue. I think it's uh, a good, uh, you know, signal they are pointing to us that mm. we should be very careful. Uh, cholera is very infectious and all that. And it boils down to one thing. Uh, personal hygiene. Mm. Yeah, cholera. Yes, if you have contaminated water that you drink from, obviously you are going to be caught in this web. Uh, so I expect our people uh, to do the needful by keeping uh, very good uh, uh, sanitary conditions at all times and making sure that we're listening to proper advice from yeah. health authorities. I think that's the way to go. All right. I'll just take a quick swipe at some stories again in the Daily Guide on the international front before I go. But, uh, Doc, just back to that point that was made mention of in terms of um, UTAG. I noticed as well that Professor Ransford Jampo had indicated that uh, the unsigned petition by some 57 people, so unsigned making it, uh, 36 were not university teachers and that of the remaining who were lecturers, uh, many had issued public disclaimers, uh, some of which he would share uh, on, on the back of these happenings. So it makes for very interesting uh, times on the back of these developments. But two international stories in the Daily Guide newspaper. Senegal sets out ambitious development plan for the next quarter century, and Senegal's government on Monday unveiled a vast breakaway development plan pledging to increase average individual income by almost 50% in five years while slashing the, the deficit and debt. The 25-year project seeks to move the West African nation away from foreign dependence and debt in favor of local resources and human capital. It forms part of the radical shakeup promised by President Basiru Diomai Fai who took office in April, raising hopes in the country, battling a high cost of living and widespread unemployment. Why am I bringing it here? Because those two young men, President Basiru Diomai Fai and Prime Minister Usman Sonko, are doing some very interesting things in Senegal. <clears throat> who says young people can't lead? And again, I'm pushing. I believe that bar that has been set, especially for presidency, you must be 40 and all of that, more developed countries have had 30-something-year-olds, sometimes younger, leading their countries. Here, I don't engage in ageism, but we think uh, wisdom comes with age. Uh, and our leaders, a lot of them, have proven that wisdom does not, in fact, come with age. Then, <clears throat> North Korea blows up roads linking it to South Korea. And North Korea has blown up roads and rail lines that lead up to the border with South Korea, a further sign of its rejection of any possibility of reunification. South Korea condemned the incident and said it was deplorable that its neighbor was repeatedly conducting such aggressive, such regressive uh, behavior. And this happened around midday Tuesday. Some parts of rail lines and roads that connected the two countries were destroyed. I've been following some of these international stories and they make for interesting reading. Uh, for North Korea, we can only see what the positioning is and wonder what the future holds. But the Accra Times, I'll just leave you, Doc, with the headlines and you can react. Good news for La Drivers as MP initiates Drivers Fund. Then there's Mahama Great's MPPF in economic and employment performance. Female students dominate. APAC's 2024 student support uh, program. Any quick thoughts on these before Sweetie comes in with the next paper? I will look at... Um issue of La Drivers giving all manner of support and all that. Um, I will extend the conversation to the fact that anytime we are going for election, you see a lot of what, promises, ideas and all that. Mm. And ask myself, after election, what happened? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you don't see Ideas, Yamutu. Yes, ideas, Yamutu. And the leaders themselves, Yagudu, the runaway. <laughs> we don't see them. Yes. 
um, <laughs> you you have to continue to continue after promising you have to honor your promise you deliver based on the on the promise giving then you, next time you can go to the people for them to renew your mandate and then you you move off uh -huh. that is what is missing it's simply because of a certain attitude we have adopted over the years that we are not vigilant enough we don't hold our leaders answerable enough we tend to pamper them and glorify them and all those things get into the head of leaders and they take us for granted okay in his book he has written something which is i always quote he said when you begin to watch shower praises to leaders it take them off course and they are not able to live up to expectation and that is the problem i have in this country we should remember that leaders are leaders and they need to lead with example they need to what ensure that leaders knock off the potentials in us to be able to develop to become the best of ourselves so if you have leaders who are not uh you know in this bracket to be able to what trigger a process of this nature throw them out when you get opportunity well i think mm. praise is fitting where it is due but what we tend to do here is more like hero worship and we are oblivious once that is our candidate or the person we like we can only praise, we cannot criticize. Yeah. That, that is where the problem hmm. uh, comes in. Let me just do the headlines and then we'll leave you with that. Other, from the Ghanaian Times, let 2024 elections be peaceful. Yana appeals to Ghanaians. NDC unveils strategy to create 1.7 million jobs. On the 2024 elections, EC releases revised provisional voters register after correcting discrepancies, removing anomalies, 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 sorry. And Ghana Health Service records nine cholera cases in Greater Accra region. Um, there's a story here, just reading the title, and then we go. President appeals to Africa's development partners to fund school infrastructure. We are sorry, come back to do business in Boko. Elders appeal to fleeing corporate bodies and agencies. And then the First Lady inaugurates Ghana Traditional Council building. If any of these stories speaks to your interest, pick a copy of the Ghanaian Times and any of these other papers and read for yourself. And that's how we're wrapping up for the news review. Unless you have a dedication going out today. Well, no dedications, uh, but uh, maybe some more headlines. Galamsey supporters emerge on UTAG front. That's the Daily Searchlight uh, newspaper on a strike bursting uh, mission and I see uh, a lecturer who anyway let me leave let me leave my thoughts out Alan to lead a victory walk in Kumasi let's have common books for all African children Dr. Educhum says and fatal East Legon accidents of course that story we have done then uh, the headlines in the news center uh, silent majority of media calls for end to strike only God knows uh, who exactly that silent majority includes. Fitch also upgrades Ghana's credit rating, projects 68% debt to G GDP ratio in 2025. And then at a force and cautions against skirt and blouse voting. Anyway, uh, those are my final bits. Uh, Dr. Asante, any quick thoughts for us before you leave? Yes, I'll look at uh, the call by Yana, great one. I salute the king. It's a beautiful one. Uh, but I want to look at it this way. Anytime we are going for elections, there are things that we need to consider. The pre-election phase of the election, the election phase of the election, and then the post-election phase. Um, we are so happy that we are going for elections, and then you realize that we preach peace and all that. But what we have to put as a society, put into the system, uh, sometimes we, we don't, um, you know, ensure that they exist. So I will also add to the King's Hall call that people should help this electoral system to survive so that we build a very robust system that will stand the test of time. We should, after going through elections successfully, we should not come back and sleep. We should build in what more bridges, uh, expand the frontiers and strengthen the frontiers so that the next time the problems that confronted us before election will not be what manifesting itself in the next election. I have seen and seen with pain that 
over the years, the problems we deal with before and during election, uh, we end up in another election introducing another what problem. So we tend to have problems that we solve all the time, which are born out of what? Certain reckless activities on our part. So I support the king, but let us support the king and all those meaningful people who make this call by doing the right things and building a system that would stand the test of time. Thank you so much, Dr. Kwame Asa Santi. He's a political scientist and the head for the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. Many thanks for your time. Folks, stay for sports. Coming up next with Muftaw Nabila Abdullahi.